The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, CAMTEL, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Welcome to this distance learning session. I'm your geography teacher, Fonka George Bella. Today we are going to present our lesson 14. And the lesson is on air masses. Before we continue with the lesson, let us start by correcting the assignment. The assignment for last week was to find out the meaning and types of air masses. Now, the meaning of air masses. An air mass is a large body of air covering thousands of square kilometers, having about the same temperature and same humidity characteristics, and uh, as well as similar lapse rate over its horizontal extent. This is to say, an air mass covers a very long distance. It also covers a very large space, and as it is moving, the temperature equally increases or decreases. That's why we talk of similar lapse rate as the air mass is moving over the surface. And so this decrease or increase in temperature as the air mass is moving will depend on the characteristics of the surface as well, as we are going to see in the course of our lesson. So an air mass has mainly two major characteristics. And what are the characteristics? We have temperature, which can either be high or low. We have humidity, that is the amount of water vapor that is contained in that air mass. Some air masses are dry, some air masses are wet. So these are the major characteristics which are going to determine the different type of air masses as they are moving. We are going to see in the course of our lesson. Now we have the overview of the lesson. And our lesson of today is going to follow the following steps. We have the previous, previous knowledge, we have learning objectives, real life situation, learning activities, summary of the lesson, we're going to exercises and then we'll end by giving an assignment that will be done at home. Previous knowledge. Before this lesson, you have already had knowledge on the following aspects. Types of winds. The planetary winds, in the mesoscale winds, as well as local winds. We saw that because now that we are looking at the air masses, these air masses, they are well related to these types of winds. So a good understanding of the types of winds or uh, planetary winds, mesoscale winds and so on, is going to lead us to understand the lesson so well. So, we said planetary winds, we said, remember in our, in our lesson, we said these are winds that blow over longer distances and they are very stable. They do not change their distance. Then the mesoscale winds, these are winds that blow either from the sea to the continent or from the continent into the sea. And local winds, we said there are winds that blow over shorter distances and they tend to change their direction from one between day and night. So these are the different types of winds which we said they are well related to air masses. Real life situation, 
Let us now look at the situation in real life. In the month of December and January, people always complain about a sudden change in weather characteristics by very cold, dry air or dusty atmosphere that often results in ill health, but the period between June and August is characterized by thunder and storms that often destroy crops and property. So that is a situation that we witness during this month. Now the question is, what explain, explain to these people, to them, the cause of the harsh weather conditions during this month? What can they do to cope with the harsh weather conditions? So in the course of our lesson, we are going to acquire knowledge that is going to permit us to be able to answer these questions, to explain and also to explain, to, to give the strategies on how to cope with this situation. Learning objectives. By the end of this lesson, Leonard should explain the meaning of air masses, describe the characteristics of air masses, classify air masses and state examples. Explain the development, that is, how they acquire their characteristics, and as well as explain the air masses that affect the Cameroon and West African climates. So, these are the objectives of our lesson. Learning activities. The activities carried in the course of this lesson comprise of Define air masses, explain the characteristics of air masses, classify and give examples of these air masses, give the types and movements of these air masses, and of course, the development, how do they develop, that is how they acquire their characteristics. For example, the air masses that affect Cameroon and West Africa. So we are going to see that in the course of our lesson. Our lesson proper, we now begin with the meaning of air masses. What is an air mass? An air mass is a large body of air covering thousands of square kilometers, having about same temperature and same humidity characteristics and a similar lax rate. So what we should note in this definition, we note that it has, it covers thousands of square kilometers, meaning that it occupies a large surface area. They have the same characteristics, and these characteristics are mainly temperature. They are either warm or they are dry. That's, that's what we mean by same characteristics and same humidity. Now, humidity is whether they contain the amount of water or they are dry. So looking at humidity, we can classify them as dry winds or wet or moist winds. Then they also have the same similar lapse rate, meaning that they either decrease in temperature or their temperature decrease as they move or increase as they move. So that is what uh, it means by this lapse rate. Characteristics of air masses. Characteristics of air masses. Now we've said air masses tend to have two major characteristics. We have temperature. Air masses can either have high temperatures, in this case they are described as hot or warm. They can also be dry, meaning they are described, they can have low humidity, they are described, described here as dry or cold. Then humidity. Here we are looking at the amount of water contained. Some air masses contain much water. This is more in the case of air masses that move from the sea towards the land, referred to as the maritime air masses. So as they are moving over the sea, they carry some water, so they are usually very moist. Those that live from the land are flowing over the continent, maybe into the sea. These air masses are usually very dry and in most cases cold. So these are the main characteristics of air masses in the course of our lesson. We are going to understand more when we'll be looking at the specific types of air masses. Now, these characteristics are determined by what? 
one, the nature of the surface over which they flow. Now, if an air mass is flowing over a cold surface, take for example air masses that are flowing from the high latitude regions. You know, these surfaces are always very cold because they are permanently at times covered by ice. So as air masses are flowing over them, they tend to acquire these cold characteristics and begin and, and becomes so cold as they are flowing. Now, if on the other hand, they are flowing over a warm surface, of course, they are going to acquire these characteristics because the heat that is radiating from the surfaces will warm the air mass and the air mass is now going to become warmer or hot. Another uh, determinant of an air mass characteristic is the longitudinal belt from which this air mass originates. In this case, we have, of course, high pressure belts. They generally originate from high pressure belts, but it now depends but, on the location of this pressure belt. Take, for example, the, high, the pressure belts that are found within the tropics, that is, the subtropical high pressure belts. Usually, the air masses that originate from this area, they are usually very hot and warm because they originate from area where the temperature is high. But air masses that are originating from, for example, the polar uh, high pressure belts, they are usually very cool because the temperatures of the surface around this area are very low. So that is how air masses acquire their characteristics. That is depending on two major factors, the nature of the surface over which they flow, and also the longitudinal belt from which they originate. So, you understand that. The development of an air mass. How do they acquire their characteristics? An air mass is formed when a stagnating air mass or an stagnating mass of air acquires the temperatures and moisture characteristics of the surface, just like we're explaining. If the surface, if an air mass is stagnated over a surface that is cold, it therefore means they are going to acquire this low temperature. The low temperatures that are found just below this air mass are going to affect the air mass, thereby causing the air mass to become also cold. It also acquire their developed fluid, transmits or they transmit these characteristics uh, to the layer that is just above and is usually through conduction. What is conduction? It is a process whereby air molecules that are found in, 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 in close to the surface or that are in contact with the surface, they absorb heat, transmit this heat to the air molecules that are found just above them. These air molecules are also going to take this heat, transmit it to the next air molecules above them, and that is how the heat keeps moving upward. If the temperatures are low, that is how low the low temperatures will also be transmitted. So we are therefore saying that they acquire their characteristics mainly when they absorb this, the, the characteristics of the surface, transmit it through conduction to the air molecules that are found above, and thereby changing the whole temperature of the air. That is how they are developed. Classification or Classification of effects of air masses on weather. Air masses are classified according to their source region, taking into consideration the temperature and the humidity of the source. So, where do they originate from? So we said they are classified according to their source region. Are they originating but from the tropical region, the temperate region, or the polar region? That's the source region. Now, what is the temperature of this area where the air masses are originating, are originating from? And what is the humidity of this source region? If the source region is humid, like in the humid tropics, of course the air mass is going to be humid as well. But if the, air, if the, if the area is not humid or less humid, of course the air mass is going to be very dry. If the temperature of such an area, as we already said, is low, then the air mass too is going to have low temperature, it's going to be cold. Of course, if it is cold and it is less humid, it's going to be described as cold and dry. So, basing on this, we can therefore classify air masses as cold and dry. 
we can classify them as warm ants and moist, based on the source region. We can also classify them according to the nature of the surface over which uh, the, 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 the flow or over which they originate, surface or source region. Then we have, in this case, a distinction can be made between continental air masses, those that originate in the continent, and the maritime air masses, those that originate in the ocean or over the ocean, and they flow into the sea. So that is how we can distinguish them basing on, on the surface over which they flow. That is whether it's continent or whether it is just purely the ocean or the sea. Now, classification according to latitude. We can also classify air masses depending on the latitude from where they originate. In this case, we have the equatorial, <coughs> denoted as E, formed around the equator. We have the tropical air masses, denoted as T, they are formed around latitude 30 degrees. Then we have the polar, formed around latitude 60 degrees, as well as the Arctic or Antarctic uh, air masses, uh, denoted as A, formed over the Antarctic or the Arctic ice caps. So we have seen the classification. We have three major types of classification. We can classify air masses according to the latitude. We can classify them according to the surface and of course, according to the, to the area of origin. So that is how they can be classified. Now, combining these three classifications we have seen above, we can now come up with six basic types of air masses when we combine the three classifications. So on, on the table here, we have the type of air mass, we have the, noti the notation, and of course, the characteristics of these air masses. So the first one here, we have the Arctic or Antarctic continental, meaning that they originate in the continent. And so they are denoted as AC, that is Arctic continental or Antarctic continental. What are their characteristics? They are extremely cold and dry. These air masses that originate from this area, they are extremely cold and dry. Why are they cold and dry? It is obvious because the surface is always covered by ice, permafrost. So as the winds are blowing over this, they acquire the characteristics of the surface. Remember we said, now we classify them depending on the surface over which they blow. Then we have next, the polar continental. The polar continental here denoted as PC, polar continental. It could also be CP, small c, and a big A, that is old classification. So if you see it anywhere, it shouldn't be confused. Sometimes you can write it as small c and capital P, CP, instead of PC here. So that was a old classification, although it is still being used today. Then, what are the characteristics of this polar continental? They are cold and dry. Remember these ones, Arctic, they are extremely cold, but these ones are just cold and dry. So they have almost similar characteristics, but for the fact that uh, the Arctic and Antarctic continental are extremely cold. Then next we have polar maritime. Maritime now just simply means they originate over or in the ocean and blow maybe towards the land. Denoted as PM, we also say in some write-ups or in some books, you will see small m, capital P, MP, instead of PM, we said that is the old classification or the old annotation, but which is still in use today. So that, what are the characteristics? Cold and humid. Cold, humid, meaning that they contain some water vapor. That's why they are described as humid, but cold at the same time. The next, we have the tropical continental, denoted as T, small c. In some write-ups, you see small c and then capital T. Now, what are their characteristics? They are hot and dry. Hot and dry. The next, 
we have the tropical maritime, also meaning that they, they originate from the sea over the ocean, but within the tropical region. So denoted as TM, sometimes empty, as explained already. What are the characteristics? Warm and humid. Warm, of course, because they are around, they develop around you know, the tropical regions. You know, temperatures around the tropical region are always very high. So winds that develop from this area, they are always warm. And since they are warm now, they are blowing and are warm, they instantly tend to absorb water from the ocean and become so humid, meaning that they contain a lot of water vapor. Then the last one we have the equatorial maritime, denoted as EM, sometimes ME. Now, what are the characteristics? Hot and humid. They are hot, they are not only warm, they are hot, but humid, contain a lot of water vapor. So this is how air masses are classified. Now, we are going to look at the world map here and that shows the global distribution of air masses. Now, when we see in the red zones here, you are going to see MT, that is maritime tropical. Maritime equatorial, maritime tropical. So, M simply means they originate over the ocean. We can see maritime, tropical, meaning they originate within the tropical region. We can see here this is maritime equatorial because they originate in the equatorial region. It is still the same case here. So, here now we have continental tropical CT. So, you can now see that is the small T that is coming before the big T. So that simply means that it's a old classification, although it is still valid today. So here we also have continental, tropical. But what we notice here is that there is no uh, equatorial, continental around here. So we have only the, the, the equatorial maritime. So that is the special distribution of it. Now around Southeast Asia, around here, we also realize that we have the maritime equatorial here. Then, south here in the Pacific Ocean here, we realize, no, this is the Pacific. We have maritime, uh, maritime tropical, maritime equatorial, maritime uh, tropical as well. Then, this is the, around the Indian Ocean. Here, we have the maritime tropical, of course, Southeast Asia maritime equatorial. Then, here yeah, within uh, Australia here, we see that we have equatorial tropical. This equatorial tropical, we have said they are usually very cold, no, they are very, very dry and hot. And that is that what explains the formation of the desert here, the great Australian desert. So we can see that these winds can have, you know, devastating effects on the environment, as we are going to see. Effects of air masses on weather and climate. Now, these air masses tend to affect weather and climate, as we are going to see. Then these effects depend on their characteristics. We had earlier said air masses tend to have two major characteristics, which are temperature and humidity. These are the major characteristics of air masses. Now, generally, maritime air masses from the tropical region, maritime air masses from the tropical areas bring about rainy season because they are originating in the sea and they are coming towards you know, the continent. So they carry a lot of moisture, that is water from the sea, while they arrive over the land. This water now, as they are ascending, the water now can, they can condense, and this now causes rainfall. In Cameroon, for example, the equatorial maritime air mass brings about wet season from March to November. So we see the cause of wet season in Cameroon is because during this period of the year, that is from March to November, it is the maritime air mass that becomes so dominant 
and blows right into the continental interior of Cameroon or the country interior of Cameroon. And that is why you will usually experience rainy season, especially in some areas like in the Northwest region. That is a situation. Okay, now remember, we were talking about our life, real life situation was that during the months of around, during seven months of the year, we usually experience uh, climatic changes. That is, we experience high temperatures and during sometimes there are low temperatures. So, what is happening? It is actually because of these types of winds that we see that move. So let us look at this diagram. It's going to explain to us very well why these sudden climatic changes or temperature changes. So we see the situation in January here. What is happening is that over Africa here, we have tropical continental air mass is the one that is dominant and it blows from the subtropical high pressure belt towards the equator. As it is blowing, it is becoming so it becomes so dominant, so it brings over the effects of its characteristics over this continent, thereby bring, bringing uh, the dry season. It brings the dry season here, and then we have the maritime tropical here. Winds that originate in the ocean, they become less dominant, and so that is why they meet somewhere around the Gulf of Guinea here. When they meet here. This is known as the intertropical convergent zone. Now, during this period, what happens is that as they are meeting, the moist air that is coming from the sea and the cold, dry air that is coming from the land, when they meet now, they cause dry, they cause uh, cloudy conditions, atmospheric instability, and this results in heavy rainfall. Now, let us look at the situation in July. In July, what happens is that you know the the tropical maritime air here becomes so dominant while the continental tropical air mass becomes less dominant, it is weak. And so this tropical, marit uh, tropical maritime now blows right into the continental interiors. As it is blowing, it brings a lot of moisture and that is what actually brings rainy season. And this is usually accompanied by moderate temperatures in accompanied by clouds and atmospheric instability as well, especially in the areas where they meet intertropical convergent zones. And so this is what causes rainy seasons and dry seasons, especially in areas that are found far from the coast. So from here, we can now understand why during some areas, some periods of the year, the temperature drops. During some periods of the year, the temperature decreases and during some periods, we have thunderstorms and all whatnot. This is a period when these air masses are meeting, and this depends also on the strength of each of the air masses. So we can now understand that. Now, the effects on fronts, we have already explained that. Now, when the two air masses are meeting, these are fronts. So we have atmospheric instability formation of clouds, high precipitation, strong winds. So sometimes when we are experiencing strong winds, high precipitation accompanied by thunder, this is where these winds are meeting at the front. So that is what usually brings atmospheric instability. So let us now look at uh, the summary of what we have done before we look at exercises. So in this lesson, what have we done? We have seen the definition of air masses. We have seen, explained the characteristics of air masses, classification and examples, types and movements. We have development, how they acquire their characteristics, which we said this will depend on the surface over which they flow area where they originate. That's how they acquire the characteristics. And this is going to be through, and this we said is through conduction. All right? That's the main process. Now, let us all look at exercises. Read and answer the questions that follow. Question one, which of the following is most likely to be the source of the region for an air mass? A, a mountainous region with high relief. B, 
subtropical high pressure center. C, a large fairly uniform region. D, over one of the Great Lakes. Okay, so the correct answer here So, which of the following is most likely to be true continental polar? That is, we have polar, continental polar air mass. It is cold and humid. It develops in a cold and very rainy region. It is cold and dry. It is not able to move or further south or far south. Which of the following is the most likely to be true of an air mass forming in the Gulf of Guinea? It is classified as a tropical continental air mass. It is warm and dry. It is maritime tropical air mass. It is hanging, hot, dry, and weather. Okay, so let us now just look at our, the answers of the exercise. Question one, the answer is supposed to be subtropical high pressure center. Which of the following is the most? Question two, the correct answer is it is cold and dry. Three, it is a maritime tropical air mass. Next, it is warm. That is the correct answer. Now, we can read this to further understand. So, the assignment for our next class is, you are going to find out the meaning of climate and its elements. So, we have come to the end of this. But in the next class, we are going to start with a new topic, climate. Then the subtopic will be basic notions of climate. Then the lesson will be on the meaning of climate and its elements. <laughs> Gani la kiri watere ndong Yeso tina bia jinkido Mane tambia ninya ne injo bia yen Tam tama mote tam zabike Tam tama tonge tam zabike Tam tam tama mote tam zabike Mane tambia ninya ne injo bia yen